Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Master Paul, and I'm honored to be with you here today. Today is Thursday. It is the 15th of December, 2016. I am honored to connect with you today on the subject of abundance and the different aspects that it shows up in our life. Today we're going to be focusing on abundance in relationships. And in the last uh, four days, last three days this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the first two days we did focus on financial abundance. Yesterday we focused on health and health-related abundance. And today we're going to be focusing on relationships and how relationship blockages can inhibit us from having the kind of abundance that we would enjoy. So I am operating on Wi-Fi today, and I hope that it catches up. It was a little lagging there at first. <clears throat> but um, I was doing a little bit of homework prior to this live stream, and a lot of it has to do, of course, with relationships. I do consider myself to be uh, a bit more knowledgeable in this arena, uh, mostly because I've had my share of relationship difficulties, and so I understand uh, how it can be a bit frustrating at times and how it can keep us from having the various uh, sources of abundance that we might like in our life. So I think you're going to get a lot of value out of today's wisdom and teachings. And of course the blessings. <clears throat> um, I'm going through some sinus and uh, throat purification so I'll probably clear my throat a little more than I would like during this. But I apologize in advance for that. Also I had a couple of unusual sneezes coming in here and there. Give me just a moment. <clears throat> okay, so let me welcome those who are coming online. Welcome CJ, welcome Kristen Rojas, welcome Kathy and Helen Nowakowski. Hope I didn't uh, say, I hope I said your name correctly, Nowakowski. Welcome Johnny. Good to see you join us, Johnny. Welcome Nerma and Michelle. Good to see you as well. Monica and Patricia's joined in there. Welcome, Jean. Welcome, Carol. Uh, Chelsea, great to see you, Chelsea. Raul. <clears throat> and Pat. Got able to get out of work a little early there, Pat. Glad you could join us. Uh, Patrice, and good to see you as well, Scott. Welcome, Suki. And welcome, Ronan Kelly. Carol has jumped in there. Welcome, Carol. And welcome, Stephanie. I have a pretty universal audience that's coming in from around the world. <clears throat> so again, thank you so much for that opportunity. So relationships tends to be something that is unavoidable for the most part. Some of us can try to avoid them, but generally speaking, they enter our life whether we want them or not. And in most cases, we do want them. We, we as a human being, need the ability to connect to the other around us. And when that connection is trouble-free, when it's beautiful, when it's supportive, when it's loving and kind and considerate, <clears throat> then it is, um, it feels good. Everything about it has a value to us. And when we are in any form of relationship, and there are many forms, there's work relationship, children relationship, family relationships, there's quite a few places where relationships enter our lives. When we are in a healthy balance and communication with that relationship, and it does not have a negative impact in our life, therefore it does not have a negative impact on our abundance. But it is those times when we do have <coughs> problems with our uh, relationships, uh, wherever they might be, that it, it bleeds over, if you will, into other areas of our life. So the intention today is to reveal some of the underlying causes for that, uh, to reveal some ways in which those blockages can be seen from new eyes, addressed from new eyes, and resolved with soul power. And when we apply the, both the awareness and the soul power, the ability to resolve them so the future has less of those unpleasant uh, forms of communication that we really don't like is possible. And as we have more of that kind of a healthy relationship, the, the abundance in our life will naturally transform. <coughs> so welcome Nina and welcome Kristen. Welcome Tawana. Excuse me a moment. I'll clear myself. Don't have a cold. Just having a little uh, 
allergy purification reaction. Master Shah, who is my spiritual teacher and father, will be having a retreat and, uh, in uh, Canada. And so whenever I commit to going to a retreat, the purification begins. So mine <laughs> just began. <clears throat> so let us go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Please hit the share button if you have not done so already. Let other people know about this. And how we do that is with the four powers. We place our palms in the uh, soul light, soul era, soul service hand position. We drop the left hand in front of the heart center and the right hand remains pointed towards heaven. Keep your eyes closed and I will invite all the holy beings in. <clears throat> They're all layers of the divine and the Tao and the source. Dear Master Shah, dear all beings of light serving the plan of the light side, dear all Lama, Sifus, Gurus, Saints, Masters and Ascended Masters, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Saints and Saints Animals, Angels, Healing Angels and Archangels, dear the soul of all those on the light side, stars, planets, galaxies and universes. We love you, honor you, respect you, and I bow down to you. I sincerely ask for your presence here today to subdivide your souls and go to all of those that are enjoying this webcast. Allow them to open their hearts, open their, uh, release the blockages that inhibit them from having abundance in every area of their life, including today's focus on relationship. Uh, please bless all of us that we might be able to release the blockages that inhibit us from having the healthiest loving relationships and the greatest abundance as a result. <clears throat> to the soul of the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, I love you, honor you, I appreciate you. I'm deeply honored and grateful for this opportunity to connect with you. We invite you to please turn on in all of us, and we invite all souls in all universes to turn on their source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, and join with us at this time. <clears throat> so let us chant together. For those that are new, please just receive the blessing. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li. Lula,我爱我心儿灵，我爱穿人灵，往里引入儿母身上，送爱平安和谐，送爱平。on I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. <clears throat> Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Eloha mai au Hawaiian Eloha kakoa pau E pihili mai Puvai kako Aloha malie lo kahi Aloha malie lo kahi how, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Isn't the Hawaiian version nice? It's quite beautiful. <clears throat> I also sing the Thai version. Um, my wife wanted us to learn it in Thai, so uh, one of these days I'll sing that to you as well. But um, not today. So thank you all for joining. Welcome Tammy and welcome Yvonne. <clears throat> welcome Deborah Knight. Uh, <laughs> regarding your question, Raul, if it makes you happy, do it. <clears throat> so today is about bringing abundance to our life in the area of relationship. So raise your hand if all your relationships are perfect, right? 
every one of our relationships, relationship with our children, relationship with our husband, relationship with, with uh, a significant other, if it's not a husband, with uh, parents, relationship with co-workers or those who we work with, bosses, etc. Relationship with friends, okay? Very often, relationships can create blockages in our life. And one of the reasons why is because relationships is where we open our heart. Relationships is where we allow ourselves to be um, seen. And we allow ourselves to be felt. And we allow ourselves to be heard and understood as much as possible. So through the course of life, <clears throat> some of us have had wide open heart centers. And we just lay it all out there from the beginning. We're hurt, we're hurt. If we're not, we're not. It's just too bad. That's how I am. Some of us are very close, very close to the vest. We keep everything protected. No one really knows much about us. Some of us lie somewhere in the middle where we have a face. We have the face where we get along with everybody, but quietly we kind of cover ourselves up and don't let anybody know about the real part of us because maybe we've been hurt before and we, we kind of play that middle ground. We all have somewhere between zero and a hero in this range. And so there's no right or wrong about this range, but it's important to recognize that we bring ourselves through our personality, our ego self, <clears throat> into any communication, into any relationship with various levels of open heartedness. And it is when our heart um, uh, becomes hurt, either through uh, ego or attachment, which is often the case, um, a mindset, an attitude of belief, which is also often the case. Sometimes a person might do something that to everybody else seems relatively minor, but to earth it feels like the world caved in. And often that's linked to a past issue that was not addressed. And it has some direct correlation that we can't even see at that moment. And it might be something where they didn't listen to you and they didn't <clears throat> take the trash out and, and you go ballistic. Uh, but it may be tied to when dad beat you over the head for not taking the trash out when you were six years old. And we don't put two and two together. And so sometimes these things follow us through life. The way we bring our, um, our uh, personality, because our personality is formed through the course of our life. That formed personality gives us more open heart, less open heart, whenever we enter into a relationship. And as that relationship expands, our heart either opens more or closes. And so herein lies some of the, the benefit and the blockages associated with abundance in relationships. <clears throat> An abundant relationship, to be perfectly frank, I haven't sat down and wrote down a sentence of what is an abundant a relationship. So it might be a good place to start to hear from the divine as to what the divine identifies as an abundant relationship. And from there, we'll take some of the wisdom and teachings that, that I have learned through my uh, soulmate program, which is directly related to relationships. And then also wisdom and teachings from Dr. and Master Shah related to the virtue, the good karma, the not so good karma, and our relationships and why it shows up and then how we can resolve some of that so that we can have a lot more of that in our life. Uh, as was indicated yesterday and on Monday and Tuesday, we can have financial abundance, but it doesn't make us happy if we go home and we're yelling at the spouse. We can have excellent relationships with the spouse, but if we, if we don't have balance with our emotion, our mind, and our finances, then it impacts uh, other areas of our life. So abundance is not limited to finances. Um, every area of our life, health, which is the subject yesterday, impacts our mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs, our emotions, and our um, uh, ego when it comes to financial abundance uh, and so forth. So every one of these interconnect. So when we can bring balance to the uh, relationship aspects of our life, it's actually one of the more important aspects. Because when we have an open heart, when we can be... Um, when we can be fully present to whoever we enter into relationship with, and we don't take it personally when there is um, uh, an action that occurs that could cause us to feel rejected, could cause us to feel um, 
hurt or misunderstood or whatever occurs, we may have that experience. But if we have a high enough awareness, we can also recognize that very often it's not our stuff. It's only our stuff when we allow it to occur, when we take, uh, when we take it personally. That falls under the category actually of ego when we take things personally. <clears throat> and that's a tough one. It's a tough one uh, as someone striving to become um, a, a higher frequency being that we need to be able to be with everybody with equal love regardless of what flies out of their mouth towards us. And, and so we're going to go over some of those um, ways to get there today so that we can have healthy relationship. All right, so we're going to start by uh, divine flow. And I'm going to ask heaven, uh, I'm going to ask God to please define his definition, her definition of what is a uh, relationship that is reflecting abundance. Okay. And so welcome, Lena. Welcome, Helen. And welcome, Adrian. Welcome, Angie. Welcome, Karen. Welcome, Helen. Welcome, uh, Joanne. <clears throat> and everyone else, if I have not seen you pop up, very, very welcome to you also. So I will connect now and offer divine flow. Dear divine, I love you, honor you, respect you. I bow down to you. Today's teaching is on abundance in every aspect of life and how relationship abundance is so pertinent to bringing abundance in the other areas of our life. I ask you to please borrow my mouth, offer guidance and wisdom on identifying the values associated with an abundant relationship, what it looks like, how to maintain it, what keeps us from having it, and anything else you wish to advise. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Excuse me. How? Oh, this is the divine. My most beloved soul family. I love you all in the most and highest way and beyond what you can truly understand and comprehend. My love for each of you spans the entirety of all that has ever been created. You cannot even see, hear, or feel the width, the breadth, and the expansion of that size as all creation is limitless. And that is the expanse of my love for you. How could it be that I could have such great love for you when you say such unpleasant things to and about yourself? When you deny me sometimes of my love for you? The reason why is because my love operates in the field of abundance. I am abundance in every aspect of life. Notice how winter never ceases to come and summer always arrives on time. This is the natural law. It is the way things operate in all that I have created. And so it is with abundance. Abundance in relationship is truly no different. It operates on the normal cycles of life. There would be naturally winters and summers, falls and springs in relationship. This means that with each relationship there is opportunity for those souls that are connected to realign their internal compasses to align to the other in such a way that collectively they reach higher layers of love. You find that with the healthiest of relationships wherein they are honoring of each other, <clears throat> free of judgment, free of 
expectations and those things that create limiting growth. And so when I think of all of you, when I bless all of you, it is with the greatest of unlimitedness that I do so. How now? Mimic me. Mimic the way I see you. The way you see your children is probably the best example. And for those that do not have children, think of the greatest love that you can imagine, possibly for a pet, possibly for a space in nature, and then expand that, oh, a hundred times or more. And in doing this, you will discover by applying that love in any conversation, there can be no anger towards you that pierces that frequency. There can be no statement that overrides that love. The expectation that might have been put in place years ago, the ego that could have been hurt by a condition that was not met, etc., truly holds no water and cannot even be activated when you hold the love that I hold for you and you mimic it in your communications with others. This creates an environment of the greatest of my love and that creates abundance. I hope this explanation assists you. Remember to reflect on the greatest love you have ever experienced and hold that energy in each of your communications. If you are able to accomplish this on a consistent basis, you will experience the greatest love and the greatest abundance. This is your beloved divine. Ha, ha, ha. I bow my head nine times to the divine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Countless bow downs, countless bow downs, countless bow downs. <clears throat> okay, what a beautiful message, huh? So thank you all for uh, listening to that. Hopefully you received some value from that message. I know I did. <clears throat> it's something that I personally have not practiced. And so for me, it's a, it's a very good insight to be able to consciously grasp the greatest love and to bring it into each relationship. It makes sense, really, because a lot of the, the wisdom, the teachings that I share with my soulmate clients, which is relationship-based blockages, <clears throat> is about unwinding the past and resetting the magnetic pulse for the future. And what, what the divine was saying was that if you want to do the shortcut version that has the greatest effect, bring the highest love you can find into each moment of that relationship. And then that underlying, however they're being towards us, whatever our attachment is to the way it should be, our, our I am right stuff, whatever it might be that comes up for us in those moments, what Divine was saying was those actually don't even have a root. They can't, they can't formulate and come up to bother us because we're holding that strong, firm love going into that communication. So maybe you want to try that with um, those that you have had the greatest difficulties with. Might find, uh, might find some uh, tremendous uh, gain from that uh, very simple wisdom. I think one of the hardest parts actually is, of course, is remembering in the moment to awaken to, uh, and, and instead of being in a knee-jerk response, be fully present with that divine love prior to entering, entering that um, communication. Probably easiest for us to do this <clears throat> when we are in communication with our children. They tend to receive the most unconditional love from us uh, because we believe they know no better. And in fact, they're probably our greatest teachers. Okay, let's see who else has joined us. Sharon Lackey's joined us. Welcome. 
and welcome Rushi. Okay, so today, in working with this, what I wanted to touch on a little bit was some base underlying teachings. Now, these are related to the um, the wisdom that Master Shah brings to us is that <clears throat> those that enter our life, the husband that we have, the children that we have, the ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, um, the current boyfriends, the current girlfriends, we have traded roles with them. One of the reasons they're so close to us is because we've done this before. That probably is not new information for anybody that's watching today. But one of the keys is that we don't live our life with that recognition. Think about it. We know what I just said. There's probably one, maybe two or three people that then go, oh, I didn't realize that. But the others, yeah, we already know that. <clears throat> so why is it that we step into those relationships again and again and go through suffering again and again? Why is it that we repeat the same style of relationship? Where, where and, and a good example um, might be um, a relationship where somebody is consistently disrespectful and dishonoring. That could be emotional damage, mental suffering, it could be physical suffering. Uh, but you leave that relationship and you get into another one, and sure enough, that next person uh, is emotionally, physically, or mentally um, unpleasant to us. So how is it possible that we can continue to enter relationships of, of that nature, obviously keeping us from having the abundance that we've been enjoy on all levels in our life, and one of the reasons why is because of the karmic implications associated with it. <clears throat> so it might be that there is a deeper wisdom there. And so part of what we need to do is unwind that. And in the unwinding process, of course, it means taking responsibility. It means taking a look at, well, if I've had this pattern where people are consistently treating me with disrespect, people are consistently, um, uh, I'm opening my heart to them, but uh, they never open their heart to me. That happens for a lot of the male-female relationship because women in general have a much more open heart than men. That's a very generalized statement. It's not always true. But a general truth in that women tend to have a lot more open heart than men. And um, so it's very difficult for them because they go into a relationship in the open heart and the guys are somewhat guarded. Um, again, I'm being very, very general here, so don't take any of this personally. And so that doesn't mean that one is good and one is bad. It doesn't mean that, that there aren't guys that can't open their heart. What it means is that we must recognize those imbalances and work within those uh, areas. So for the woman in this example, if she knows that that's uh, probably the case going in, then she cannot take it so personally uh, when the man is not as open-hearted as she is. They can, because taking it personally means uh, I did something wrong, I opened my heart when I shouldn't have. No, that causes us to close our heart. Men have done the same. We've all come in there and we've opened our heart to uh, you know, a significant other and um, maybe they were lying to us. Maybe they weren't interested in us. Maybe they were just trying us out and decided there was a part of us that we, they weren't sure about and they split and our heart was hurt. So it works both ways. Um, but how do we keep that from happening in the first place? If we follow the guidance that the divine just gave us, the guidance is um, to bring a fully and unconditional loving heart to the table and regardless of what comes out of the other person's thoughts, words, or actions, we be in a place where we are unconditional love. Because when we close our heart, does that bother them? Does that hurt them? Or does it hurt us? And this is the problem. Because how are we supposed to have abundance if our heart is closed? They don't, it doesn't work that way. Abundance of any kind, abundance of a healthy relationship, abundance of finances, abundance of health, does not work when the heart is closed. Your, your heart center, your, your message center is related to your physical heart. They're separate entities entirely, but there's a direct relationship in that the energy associated with the heart center directly impacts the energy that is used to pump the physical heart. And so when we close our energy center heart because we're, we're uh, not in a healthy space to begin with, <clears throat> we're absolutely impacting our physical health. That impacts our abundance. We're absolutely impacting our finances because we carry forth emotions and mindsets uh, around, oh, that person hurt me. Oh, I'm not worthy enough. Oh, all of these negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs that we adopt when, in fact, 
the highest and best place to be is I am always in a perfect loving uh, alignment with the divine I've never not been loved by the divine and as I move into any relationship I will simply move in with an open heart offer my best and my highest and if that doesn't work I'm not going to close my heart I'm simply going to reassess keep my heart open and do the best I can to be an even more loving person as I move forward I'm not going to take it personally what transpired here I might even recognize that if I have been hurt what might have I done on a karmic level that has created that hurt in different lifetimes okay because under Master Shah's teachings the teachings that have have transpired around the world in various uh, belief systems we sow what we read so it's very common sense if we can keep our heart open not take things personally not fall back on the past not uh, um, uh, belittle ourselves we can stay in a place where our heart remains open and we can then say okay what have I done that has brought this condition around where I'm unable to have the kind of healthy and loving relationship that I deserve with this person that they deserve with me you then become a casual observer whose heart remains open now takes practice no question about it I have found myself many times in uh, a knee-jerk responses where I just you know it's you know I, I will get angry now fortunately because of uh, working with the teachings of Master Sean doing tons of forgiveness practices and lots of clearing of the blockages fortunately those are much 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 less but they still do happen so it is a lifelong process this is a, a marathon not a race and as we move to maintaining an open heart so that we can maintain abundance in every aspect of our life it begins with maintaining those things that keep our heart open what do you think that might be those things that keep our heart open what what would you guess be I'm gonna wait I want to see some of your responses thank you for all those that are sharing my video truly appreciate that hopefully this will serve many many souls <clears throat> so I'm still waiting for some of your responses we want to be able to keep our heart open it's a very good response Eric the ten das I was touching on that a little bit yesterday keeping our heart open with the greatest love forgiveness compassion light flourishing service enlightenment harmony humility Stephanie says talking with the divine absolutely forgiveness practices and more self-love and others says Chelsea joy love and happiness says Nicole okay so exceptional answers so the question becomes what inhibits us from staying in that place on a consistent basis we know the answers all of you knew this answer love forgiveness staying in the right mind place how do we fall out of that right mind place it's a lack of awareness Helen hit it on the head being present and aware when we are resetting ourselves, especially when we find ourselves out we have to be conscious enough to pull ourselves away from that knee-jerk auto response that never takes us in the right direction go to the bathroom close the door in your bedroom go for a walk outside take the dog out if you smoke your cigarette go have your cigarette whatever you need to do to reset into love and awareness you do forgiveness <clears throat> you chant something of a higher frequency you say okay I was taking this response personally I was uh, as I think about it actually it reminded me of what my mom did to me reminded me of what my dad to me reminded me of what my ex said to me blah 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 I started falling into victim mode and I choose to be present now I choose to bring God's love into me to open my heart and to be fully conscious to listen to what the other has to say to not take it personally to reflect back to them what they are saying and allow them to unwind and in doing so because my heart's open because I took time to back up and realign I will maintain my health and well-being I will maintain my open heart 
which serves my soul journey. I will have done forgiveness or I'm doing forgiveness while they're talking. This is a, an advanced thing to do, but if you can, while they're talking, you're just nodding your head, listening, reflecting, and you could be internally going, please forgive me. Whatever I have done that has caused you to have this irritation towards me. Thank you. I love you. This is a present awareness. It is a life choice. And you have to ask yourself, how have your relationships been? Have they all been um, hunky-dory? Have they all been perfect? Have you had a consistent blockage that runs through all of them? Or a few of them? If they're the romantic kind, has there been a consistent blockage? If they're the children kind, is one child to get along great with, the other one not so much? Okay. If it's the parents, always willing to share with dad but can never get along with mom, maybe it's in reverse. Okay. When we do the present awareness aspects, when you go to that one parent that's so difficult to connect with and they're so distant and you be present with love, <clears throat> and you ask and you're doing forgiveness in your head while you're chatting and you don't take it personally I'm not a worthy daughter my dad doesn't love me all this mind talk example okay just an example but when you become fully present as the divine gave us the advice through this flow you could discover that in 5 10 15 minutes all of a sudden in this example of dad start sharing sharing something that you never would have thought about and so you reflect and you honor and you appreciate and you show interest and that might lead to another healthy conversation as you go and then those previous 20 years dissolve I want to share with you a real-life example then we're gonna do a practice I'm gonna release some blockages okay <clears throat> there is a relationship that I've had uh, with a another divine channel and I was a student working to become a divine channel this person was already a divine channel and I was taking so much personally I cannot tell you how much suffering I went through by taking various things that, that this person said personally. Um, eventually, I had to, to sit down with this uh, divine channel. This was after I had become one. And actually it wasn't. It was before I had become one. Uh, and I had to let them know of the suffering that I was going through, of the victimhood I was in, of the, um, the things that I perceived was being said to me about me whatever the case may be and here's the most shocking part this person i been this is like two years three years this person was 100 percent unaware completely unaware that any of their thoughts words or actions were causing me any of the suffering they had no idea that I was going through this last three years where I'm behind the bars rattling the cage going you're hurting me it's all your fault why do you communicate with me this way why do you da 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 and they were completely clueless <clears throat> so for me that was a massive massive aha moment I can promise you there's at least one relationship in your life that's very similar to that and the reason why this was such a big aha moment was because it wasn't the only one there are many out there our perception is very often not the same as someone else's and with an open heart with a heart of love and communication one that says I'm here to listen and react and respond in a loving way I hope that you're able to communicate back with me which they may not be able to but either way I honor myself, I honor my heart, I honor my well-being that I can maintain abundance in every area of my life. I'm not going to allow negative self-talk to enter because I honor myself. I'm not going to allow uh, judgments, criticisms from you to enter because I know that your highest self would not say those kinds of things to me. I'm just going to be in a loving place in this communication and we're all going to come out a little bit higher than we would have in any other condition again it takes practice and it takes awareness as Helen has said but we can do it and the simplest way to get there forgiveness for self and to the others love as much as possible especially in those conversations and awareness 
so that we don't fall into knee-jerk patterns. And if we do, which is, will happen, pull yourself out of it, get yourself a private space, reset, and bring yourself back in in the better place. Okay? And if you can't, then you wait and you do more forgiveness. You surround yourself with love, peace, and harmony in higher frequencies. Okay? So this is something that, if applied, regardless of the relationship, you can create significant, significant shift. I've seen quite a few comments as I was chatting, <clears throat> and I want to acknowledge those comments. Kristen said she sings love, peace, and uh, she sings and chants Ling Wei Sheng Shi to keep her heart open. And Ling Wei Sheng Shi, for those that are not familiar, is the name uh, Soul Light uh, Intelligence Buddha for Kuan Yin. Uh, Chelsea Jankowski says, laugh out loud, greatest love master Paul. Love how you have a great sense of humor. Thank you, Chelsea. Uh, Karen, consistently blocked with most relationships. So come back and listen to this again, Karen, and write the baseline techniques down and bring them to your next relationship. And when you catch yourself getting into that um, typical habit, back out of it, do the steps, just try back in, move back in. Again, when we close our heart, who loses? Okay? This relationship now with this divine channel, 90% better. 90% better. Um, it was all my stuff that I was taking personally. It inhibited me from even being able to be here to share with you. But without that experience, I would not be able to share with you where you can see that we're all going through the same learning curve. But it certainly didn't help me to keep my heart closed. And it certainly didn't help me to, to uh, have all this victimhood stuff going on. So... We all have our own version of that in some way. Uh, welcome, Jenny. Erica says, if I'm in my Mingmen, <clears throat> then my ego dissolves. But so too do the egos around me because there is nothing for the other egos to react to. Uh, if I'm in Tao, then I'm in one with the others. That's an excellent, excellent response, Eric. Uh, for those that are not familiar with the Mingmen, it's called the Tao point. It's an energy point that is in that dip in the center of your lower back, directly across from the navel. And if we are able to maintain our focus in that area. We're chatting to somebody, but our mind, our thoughts, our breath is in that area. It's, it's, it's the same as being in the Tao, the same as having an open heart. You're not taking things personally. And his, uh, uh, an excellent point in that it does impact others because we're bringing in a much higher frequency. So it uh, disallows, in many cases, them from leveling up. Uh, welcome, Magdalene. Welcome, Sarah. Welcome, uh, Everybody else that I have not mentioned. Carol says, one woman was upset because another woman knew she was always scowling at her, uh, which she felt was because in her mind of her race. Yeah. Turns out the woman was blind because of squinting and partially deaf. And, um, and so in other words, it was false. So our perceptions, you see how they work? I've seen that before. Leslie says, it's amazing how I came across your teachings right now. I just got off the phone with someone I felt was using me and I don't know... I don't want to close my heart because of this. Great, Leslie. Hopefully this wisdom has served you. So let's do a practice to clear some of the blockages and allow us to be present. Okay? <clears throat> so everybody sit up straight. We're going to do a heart opening practice. <clears throat> We're going to ask Lev Kuan Yin to join us as well. We'll use a Kuan Yin mantra. So we place our, our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, left hand uh, over the heart center, very relaxed, very gentle. Don't push on your heart center. Uh, the right hand gently pointed towards heaven. Close your eyes. Bring your mind, your heart, your breath into your heart center. Or if you know where your Mingmen point is, you may focus in your Mingmen acupuncture point. And we invite beloved Ling Wei Sheng Shi, beloved Quan Yin, to please come to be with us at this time. So repeat after me. We're going to do a quick forgiveness practice and then we'll do a little soul power and then we'll chant a special Kuan Yin mantra <clears throat> to release the blockages. So keep your eyes closed. Repeat after me. Dear beloved, the divine, the Tao, the source, I love you, I honor you, I deeply respect you and appreciate you. I thank you, the divine, for your information earlier to remind me to keep my heart open Dear all souls, in this and all time, if I or my ancestors have miscommunicated with you, if we have caused you to 
think bad things about us because of our thoughts, actions, non-actions, because of our words, because of our intonations, because of our activities. If I or my ancestors have brought any form of harm or suffering to you in any kind of relationship that we have ever had in any lifetime, I deeply and sincerely apologize. If I have spoken to you in such a way that has caused you to close your heart, if I have communicated with you in such a way that has caused you to feel like you cannot love again or are unwilling to love again, if I have broken vows to you, vows of loving you forever, if I have made promises to you and broken promises and caused you to suffer, truly, truly, I deeply and sincerely apologize. I do not wish to create this kind of suffering on any souls, anywhere. I wish to learn my lessons and to be love in all my relationships. Please forgive me. Please forgive me unconditionally. If in this or any lifetime you or your loved ones or ancestors have harmed me in any way, I unconditionally release you of any karmic debt that you may have to me. I release you with the greatest love and ask for your unconditional forgiveness. Let us move forward together in love, peace, and harmony. I am so very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear beloved Kuan Yin, I love you. Continue to repeat. I love you, honor you, and appreciate you. As I chant your mantra, could you please bless me to open my heart? Could you please bless me to clear my blockages of self-love? Could you please bless me to be more aware and respond and communicate from the heart of my beloved God's love. I'm very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I will start chanting the mantra. You tune in as you desire and chant along with me. <clears throat> it is a very ancient mantra that carries with it uh, enlightenment frequencies. Wong mani ba ma hong Wong mani ba ma hong Visualize golden or rainbow light coming into your heart center, fully opening your heart center. Wong mani ba ma hong 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 
Om Mani Padme Hum. 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 Continue to chant. I will chant just another minute or two, and I want you to continue to chant, and I will do a soul reading as to what is happening during this blessing. Om Mani Padme Hum. 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 Continue, and I will offer a soul reading. <clears throat> My beloved, this is Kuan Yin. It makes my heart sing that all of you have come and are so willing and present, diligent to do this practice. This mantra has been said to be mine, but in fact it is far more ancient than I. It carries the frequencies of your beloved Creator, and when you chant it, it opens your hearts, it heals and releases all that has expanded from your original birth outward. In fact, it creates reverse creation such that you are reversing all that has not served you and retaining all that has. As you are all chanting, I have subdivided my soul I have come to each of you, and I sit in each of your heart centers. I radiate my greatest love to each of you. My thousand hands and thousand arms are working with the greatest speed and the greatest love to clear your blockages. Most of you actually suffer from a lack of self-love, a misalignment of teachings to the love of your beloved divine. All of you must know that your love and the divine's love are truly one, and in the alignment to your beloved Creator's highest love for you. You can be all that he has said. It is as far away as your awareness. His love and your love 
are already one. Simply align to that truth. For each of you, I have left a shield inside your heart center so that when it tries to close, to protect itself, in fact, what will occur is a reminder of the Divine's love that you may keep your heart open to offer compassion and understanding that you might not revert to old patterns. And in the keeping open of your heart and in the aligning to your beloved Creator's love, you will each heal on far more significant levels than you could through hours of practice. This is because of your beloved Creator's love for you that I have been given the authority to gift this a blessing to each of you. My service is your service. Call upon my soul whenever you need me and instantly I will serve you. I love you all in the most high way and I honor you all for your efforts on this most beautiful soul journey. This is your beloved Kuan Yin. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's offer our gratitude to Kuan Yin in whatever way you feel comfortable for the blessings that she has offered us. And we thank the soul of the mantra on its original source for its service to us here today as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So please uh, share, what was your experience with this practice on today? Uh, did you notice anything come up for you? Did you notice any um, emotions, vibrations, frequencies, movement in the heart center? Um, for those that were focusing on the Ming, they notice any vibration in your Ming Men point. This is a practice that can and should be done uh, whenever you are concerned about relationships, okay? Because it's a heart opening practice. Uh, uh, Kristen, uh, beloved Kristen, she's done an amazing job putting up links and information, and she's written the correct verbiage, Wong Mani Ba Ma Hong, and you can write that down. Uh, you can listen to the video again until you get used to the chant. And um, it is quite ancient, well over 5,000 years. Um, that's what we know about. And Kuan Yin just stated it's well beyond that. And so in connecting to this mantra, we are instantly connecting to Kuan Yin. And you might wish to do this prior to a communication where you know in the past it has not been the easiest uh, communications that you've ever had. And in doing so, you allow your heart to remain open. You could be chanting it silently while uh, you're communicating with that person. They're talking to you, they're yelling at you, they're telling you uh, about the job, blah, blah, blah. And you just quietly, and they say something and you nod your head. Yes, thank you. Okay, I'll do better. There's no room for ego, for I'm right. There's no room for uh, uh, self-degradation because we've kept our heart open. And this is the wisdom. The purpose of all of this wisdom today to allow abundance to not only come to us, but stay with us. Do you think abundance goes away accidentally? No. It goes away because we have not allowed it to stay with us. The heart center and the other six energy centers, the chakras, soul houses, whatever the verbiage is you're familiar with, are related to the entirety of the flow of chi through our life. Chi is not just energy in the form of, of energy. Chi reflects flow of abundance. It reflects flow of health. It reflects flow of finances. And so when we have flow in our life, it starts by having healthy, clear energy systems. And the heart chakra is one of the most important directly related to the flow of abundance. 
So it has been a very, very powerful practice. So I see some of the responses. Um, Sarah says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Stephanie says, felt a nice shift into oneness, love, and peace. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very welcome. Uh, and thank you, Christina, also for coming and for sharing. <coughs> Sharon Lackey says uh, she was closing her heart again and opening it again. Yeah, we all do. Uh, the key is, remember, this is not a race. It's a life marathon. And if we can go through this entirety of life, opening our heart more and more and more, we won't be one of those people that are close to their deathbed before they wake up and say, I wish I could have da 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 There's a lot of people like that that wish they could have changed things. You have the ability to do that now. Leslie says, thank you, Kristen. Uh, Tawana says, body swaying back and forth. Chelsea, thank you, thank you, thank you, greatest love. She began to dance, nodding her head in the infinity sign and felt the deepest love and happy high frequency. So grateful for this practice. She'll continue to do it. Great. And dancing, have to say, brilliant move. Soul movement is so powerful. What is soul movement? Dear my soul, please move my body in whatever way is needed to help me release my blockages to fill in the blank. I tell you, if you let your soul move you, you can release all kinds of pain and suffering, significant physical blockages, you can move them out fast. Emotional blockages, you let your soul move you. Big difference than you moving your, your body. Uh, so thanks for that sharing, Chelsea. Eric says, wow, I felt so much vibration and frequency in his heart. Thank you for the new insights and the power of this beloved mantra from our dearest beloved Kuan Yin. Uh, have to board his plane. Yeah, thank you, Eric, for joining us and thank you for tuning in uh, before you're flying out there. Welcome, Chrissy. Hope you get to go back and see this one. Uh, a lot of good responses today. Hopefully, you'll uh, get some value on it. Same for you, Ali. And welcome, Dvorka. So we're just finishing up. And so I want to thank you all for coming today. Uh, tomorrow, I will not be here. So this will be the close of this series this week. Uh, if you missed the financial uh, abundance, that was on Monday and Tuesday. Please come to, my, come to my Facebook page. Scroll back down through it and uh, see those. And then um, uh, yesterday was on health, abundance with health. And today, of course, with relationships. So very, very valuable uh, wisdom. Make sure, don't, when I say share, I don't mean share for me. If you have a friend that needs this, put it on their timeline. Send them the URL of this video. If you, when I finish this, if you right click on the video, uh, one of the choices is show URL. That's the, the web address for this video. Put that in an email and send it to the person that needs it. So sharing is not about making this video blow up. That's going to happen if Divine wants it to. Sharing is about making a difference in people's life to make them happier and healthier. So when you go through these, I am confident that almost in any given day that I offer teaching wisdom and blessings, someone you know can benefit from this. Put that video URL in an email to them. Okay? They'll click on it, they'll watch it, and they'll send you a thank you because it will probably benefit their life. So I apologize if the video has skipped a bit today. I was running on Wi-Fi. It looks like it's been a little uh, hipping and hopping here. Hopefully not too bad. Um, so enjoy your weekend. Again, I will not be back here tomorrow. I'll come back in on Monday. Um, quick reminder, if you wish to receive blessings re regarding abundance, there is two crown chakra blessings that were being offered. One is for releasing the negative mindsets, negative attitudes, negative beliefs associated with receiving abundance in every area of your life. It's a very powerful one. That's $100 for the crown chakra blessing. The second crown chakra blessing is one I received and very proud of. I hope you guys get it. Uh, it's a little bit more on the honor fee, but well worth it. And it's aligning our mind to the divine's mind on the subject of abundance. So your thinking and God's thinking align around abundance. What that does is it removes high levels of stress and perceptions around where the next food's going to come from, the next dollar's going to come from, the next whatever. We just change our perspective. Why is that relevant? Because when our perspective is changed, our manifestation changes. What we focus on is what we receive. And so when we can align our perspective to the divine's perspective, that's huge. That one, unfortunately, takes a lot more virtue because there's a lot of karma associated with that. So the honor fee is double. It's 200. 
Um, I hope that some of you can take advantage of that. If that's of interest to you, let me know. You can email me, text me, uh, Facebook message me, however you want to contact me uh, through my website, however it is, okay? Please let other people you care about know about any of the videos that have touched your heart. I love you all. I will see you very, very soon. Thank you to all the holy beings that have come. Please respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you next week on Monday.